Hey everyone, okay, so it is a Saturday night and I probably should be out doing something but I don't really have anybody to do anything with and I know, right? And I'm here instead filming. Now, I wanted to make this video and it's going to be a bit long so if you don't want to watch it, that's completely fine. Um, and it's probably one of the most personal I've ever made. Um, a while ago, and it was a while ago now, somebody left a comment saying, you've changed so much in you you just review high-end products, we can't all afford high-end products, and you know, it was, it was a money question really, and insinuating that because I review high-end products, you know what I mean, you know what I'm getting at. So I kind of wanted to share a bit of a story with you, and kind of talk you through my story, so if you want to turn off, you absolutely can. Okay, as I sit here in this room, I am surrounded by all my makeup, and this is just a fraction of it. You don't need all this stuff, believe me. You can get by on a really small kit and that is perfect. All of this is just bollocks. But all of this bollocks around me, I paid for myself. 90% of it, say, I paid for with my own money. And it's very, very important to me because I didn't grow up with money at all. Believe me, we had no money. So when I look at all of this stuff and that I paid for it myself, it means something to me. It means a great deal to me. When, we, when I was growing up, um, as you know, I was fostered and I am the only child. And we had no spare money. Now, don't get me wrong, we weren't, you know, I didn't go without, I was always fed and all of that stuff, but we had no extra money. I couldn't just go up to my mum and say, could I have five pounds please? Because she didn't have it. There was no money. And my mum worked really long hours two jobs, sometimes three jobs, doing different things. She tried her absolute best, and she was a wonderful mother, and is a wonderful mother, but we had no extra money. And there was a point in my life, when I was about 12 years old, where I went upstairs to my mother's bedroom, and she was sitting there on the bed crying, and she was surrounded by paper. And all of this paper was bills, and she had this little book, and none of this was her fault, by the way. I want to stress this point very, very clearly. None of this was her fault. And she was surrounded by all of these bills and this little book where it was, if I pay the gas, then I can't pay the electricity. And if I pay the electricity, then I can't pay the rent. And it was like that. And it was at that moment, I actually think that it's one of those defining moments where I suddenly realized the incredible importance of money and how awful it is when you don't have any. Now, to cut a long story short, we lost our house and my mother and I went into bed and breakfast where we had to live um, and it was subsidised. The government was paying for us to stay in bed and breakfast because we had no home. And after bed and breakfast, we then went and stayed with my mother's sister. And we stayed there for several months and she gave us her son's rooms and my mum and I slept in there on the mattresses that we had on the floor. And then the council gave us a house. And it was lovely. And my mother and I lived there. You know, we were completely happy. We had our own place. It was council house. It was a council flat. Uh, it was a second floor one. And we were happy. We were perfectly fine. But we still had no money. And my mum worked so hard. She did repairs on dresses and repairs on um, clothing. She worked cleaning toilets and, and scrubbing all of that kind of stuff in schools. She just worked so hard but we never had lots of money. And I remember thinking to myself, and I was a very, very unhappy teenager as well, um, and I just wanted something so badly. I wanted a different life. Not because my mother didn't provide a wonderful life. I wanted a different life. I wanted to be able to say, this is my home. And, and I can afford to buy, if I want to go out and just buy something, I can do that without having to think about it. And, and I knew that that's what I wanted because I'd, I'd seen the house we lost and I'd seen, you know, all the things we didn't have and, and I wanted a different life. I also wanted a life where I could give something to my mother if she needed it. She didn't have to worry where the money was going to come. I could just give her it without having to think about it. And that thought stayed in my mind for a really long time. So when I look around at what I've achieved and it makes me feel good. I always wanted high-end stuff, not because I think it made me better, but because I just wanted it. I wanted it so badly. And 
When I first got into makeup, the, uh, I had no money back then either. And all I had could afford was to go into the shops that were selling stuff really cheap. And it was like a pound for all this stuff. So I was going in there and buying all this amazing stuff. And it was like a pound. And it was all drugstore. And it was fabulous. So I could learn and practice. And I remember like one of the first high-end things I ever got was something from Bobby Brown. It was a foundation and a concealer. And I loved this. I, I was in love with this. It didn't matter if it was any better or worse than the drugstore. I just loved it. I loved how it made me feel. And so when I look around and I see all the stuff in front of me, and then I paid for that with my own money, and I, and I worked really hard for everything that I have. It didn't, nobody just came and said, there you go, there you go, Wayne, have all this. Here's some money, have it. No one did that. My parents had no money. They couldn't give me any money. I realized that you have to do it on your own. Some people are very lucky and they're born into wealthy families and it's a much easier ride, but some of us have to work really hard for what we've got. When I started my brush line, um, I had in my bank was the money I had and it wasn't enough to fund the brush line. I needed extra, which I took a loan from the bank. Every single penny I had went into that brush line. And at the time I had an agent, and uh, a totally different agent. And he was like, well, we could do a brush line, but it wouldn't be mine. You see, it would, be, it would basically be a private label brush line. And I was thinking, well, I am in love with brushes. And that didn't sit well with me. I wasn't gonna do that. And it was like, well, we could get you into boots, we could get you into super drug, but it, would, it wasn't mine. There was no risk. So if it didn't work out, it wouldn't matter because then I, I wouldn't have any losses. But it wasn't mine. And I wasn't really creating them. I wasn't actually designing them. So I just said, look, I'm not going to do that. I think I'm just going to do this on my own. And he was like, okay, fine. Just do it on your own. It'll be a passion project. Kind of thinking nothing would happen. I took every single penny I had, which was everything to me at the time. I had saved so hard because I was so scared of losing what I had. And I took every penny in a bank loan and I put all of this money into this single collection of brushes. And at the time that they were being made, I had nobody to sell them. I had no other contacts. It was something in my mind was saying to me, this will be okay, you can do this. And luckily I did. I found a very, very nice company that sold them for me. Um, and the whole thing turned out to be a wonderful experience, but none of it was given to me. I had to work for every single thing I had. So when somebody says, you changed so much, I haven't. I've always reviewed high-end products since I've been on YouTube. And here's some of the reasons why. I, I, I know it's all bollocks and believe me, when you're sad, money only matters when you don't have it. And I am very aware of what it's like to have no money. Um, it is a horrible experience. And, and I'm not any more intelligent than anybody else. I'm not, I have not been blessed with any particular skills. I didn't find makeup artistry to be really clever or it was simple. It was a struggle for me. I had to learn everything. I can't draw, I still can't draw, I still can't do a face chart. But I never, during the process of you know doing someone's face and it was just horrific, I never thought, oh, I just can't do this. I just thought, I can't do this yet but I am gonna do this. I am gonna do this because I love this. This makes me happy. This fills me with joy. The process of transforming a face, of beautifying of it, of beautifying it, of making it more wonderful than it is, fills me with joy. Everything about all this stuff in front of me, even the stuff I, I think, oh, I wish I hadn't bought that, fills me with joy, fills me with possibility of change, that these products, can somehow change me and change the people that I'm applying them to. And that's the lowdown of it really. This is, you know, this is who I am. I am a makeup artist and I'm not an artist and I am not any more, more, I'm not any more intelligent than you are and I'm not any more gifted or lucky or anything than anyone else. It was about deciding this is what I want and nothing, nothing is gonna stop me from doing this. I will do this and I will do this without any help, without anybody else. 
You do it on your own and you will make it, I promise. If you want it that bad, you can do this. And now as I sit back and I see all this stuff, and I know I did this for myself, and I did it for my mother, and I did it, but I didn't, I did it for me, I, because I wanted this. This is what I wanted. I wanted to achieve something, and I wanted that to matter, not to anybody else, but to me, to think that I did something on my own without anybody else's help. You know, no one helped me. And that's why it feels so good when I sit here and I look around and I look at the brushes that I've created and I'm still creating and I'm still paying for it. I pay for every single thing myself. When it comes to my business, nobody has a say in what I do. Nobody. It is my business, my brushes and anything else that I may want to create, whether it is more brushes or makeup, I will pay for this and I will pay for it on my own because I don't want somebody saying to me, you can't do that or you should do something else. Never going to happen. I know what I want. I know that if, if I had my way, I would have a hundred nude eyesh uh, eyeshadows, a hundred nude lipsticks. It would just be these nudes and you just can't get enough nudes. That's how I feel. And people are like, yeah, well, they're not very pretty. They're not very eye catching. You can't just do a set of brown eyeshadows. Why can't I? I can do whatever I want. If I'm going to do this by myself, I'll do what I want. And if I want to have 30 brown eyeshadows that only have half a shade difference between each one, then I want to do that. That's what I want. And that's what makes me happy because that is what fills me with joy. And I have gone on for way more time than I normally do talking. So I apologize. And if you skip the head, I absolutely don't blame you. But there you go. That comment has always stuck with me saying about how much I've changed. And believe me, I am the same person I always was. Right from the beginning, I'm still dreaming. I'm still thinking of what I want to do with my life because I still don't really know what I'm doing with my life. But I love what I do and that makes me happy. And I truly believe that when you love what you do, the money will follow. You just got to find what it is you love to do and then let's work on making it a living. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.